Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. <sighs> I did not think this video would be the first video I would be filming for 2022. Um, I didn't think I'd ever have to make a video like this ever in my whole life. I cannot believe I'm making a video like this. It's crazy. I probably chose the worst time to film this video because the sun's like kind of setting. So apologies about all the bad lighting in this video. So yeah, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tish, if you don't know. I am a business owner, I make YouTube videos um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyways, I'm not gonna blabber on about that stuff. Uh, yeah, welcome to the video that I never thought in a million years that I would be making, but here we are. If you're new here, it would mean a lot if you could subscribe. Um, I post videos weekly, sometimes twice a week. It just depends how I go. Before I kind of jump into the whole video, I thought I would just mention that I do struggle with a bit of brain fog. Definitely not as bad as in hospital. In hospital, it was so bad. Um, but now that I'm out and I'm pretty much my brain kind of feels like it is a little bit more back to normal um i do still suffer from it a little bit so if i kind of mess up my words and everything like that oh <laughs> that is the reason and i also did just pop some pills before filming this because i was in quite a bit of pain um so i might get a little bit drowsy in this video anyways it's just all part of my life now <laughs> So yeah, I guess basically I'm just going to get into the story of what happened to me. Um, the crazy story of yeah, my accident. Um, it's a pretty long story so this video is going to be yeah, probably quite long. I have written down what happened just in case I forget um, certain things. So I'm just going to kind of look down at this so that I remember what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I thought I would kind of tell you guys my story about... What exactly happened on that day and what has exactly happened to me I'll pop up images and videos as I talk so you can kind of see things that I have photographed or whatever um, and then I'll talk about my hospital experience what kind of happened to me in hospital um, and then I'll talk about kind of what my life looks like right now basically this video is quite hard to make because um, you know it's just reliving all those experiences but um, I do really want to kind of just explain what happened because you know there's a lot of people out there who are really worried I also just want to say thank you for everyone who supports me if you don't already definitely check out my Instagram That's where I've posted pretty much everything right from the day it happened I've just been kind of posting bits and bobs here and there of kind of recovery process and um, everything like that and just updating everyone on my Instagram so I'm definitely more active on my Instagram but of course I'll be filming more videos on YouTube like days in my life and um, updating you through those videos. I have a story highlight called accident and that's where I post everything to do with the accident I guess but I really wanted to film this video because I never really got a chance to actually explain what happened um, and what that day looked like and what hospital looked like and everything like that I never have I haven't had a chance to really share my story um, properly other than just like little snippets on Instagram just wanted to kind of um, show people that no matter what you go through because this has been bloody hard like this is the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my whole life but I feel like I've gone through the whole thing with a really positive um, mindset and stuff and I feel like that has what that's what's helped me recover so fast and so well um, is definitely the positive outlook and positive mindset so I just want to like help show people that no matter what you go through you can always find the positive in life and you can always still live your best life um, no matter what you go through I don't know I just yeah I just want to kind of show people that yeah you can always find the good in the bad I guess. <laughs> so over New Year's a group of us was staying down in Matarangi at our friend's batch and we had an amazing time at New Year's and then we had a really fantastic New Year's Day. It was so much fun. We went cliff jumping um, and we just did a whole bunch of stuff. Then we had a lot of fun on the next day and then we had a lot of fun on the next day and it was just it was awesome being able to hang out, drink at night and just have fun, party and also just hang out as a group. Um, it was just so much fun. I honestly really thoroughly enjoyed
enjoyed those um, couple of days. It was just amazing summer vibes. It was just, it was so much fun. Anyways, so on the 3rd of January, we were planning a boat day. So in the morning, we all got ready. I went to the store with my friend. We bought some fruit um, and came home and we were making sandwiches for everyone and we were cutting up the fruit getting everything ready we got all our stuff to bring on the boat and we were packing all the boat the boys were doing all the boat stuff <laughs> me and Alita were prepping all the food and the water and everything like that we uh, were gonna go out um, to Peach Grove I think it was um, and yeah we were gonna have a really fun day um, one of my friends was telling me that yeah there's an awesome like um, waterfall on the on the little island thing and it was just amazing because they had gone um, a couple days before New Year's and they said it's so cool you're gonna love it and I was super excited um, we obviously did everything correctly um, the guy who was driving the boat he you know does it all the time everything was done you know just normally safely and correctly um there were seven of us on the boat and the boat is a pretty big boat and yeah we all had our life jackets on and stuff so you know being safe and all that none of us were drinking yet um we yeah just had the boat all set up all the bags were in the seats everything was super safe and secure and yeah we were all ready to have a really fun day um so yeah we head off to go down to the place where you launch the boat i'm so, i'm so dumb with like boat stuff i don't know how it works like i literally thought we were gonna just take it down to the beach and just go into the water and go off i didn't realize you have to kind of like go to this like dock or something and like put the boat in like i sound so stupid but i literally had no idea anything about that um so i'm just sitting in the front just kind of you know oh so um we had the jeep pulling us in the boat and we had five of us in the boat just you know like going down the road to go to the place where we were going to launch the boat and two of my friends were in the jeep um and then we kind of just stopped for a bit um because they needed to grab some food or something from the like local dairy um, and I remember posting an Instagram story just saying boat date and coming um, and I was super excited. It was gonna be a really fun day. Yeah, so we got down to the dock and everything. Everything was going well and we kind of set off um, and I, so everyone was at the back and I was still sitting in the front um, because that's where I was sitting when we were driving the boat down. Um, so I was sitting in the front of the boat um, and I had my legs outwards on the seat because we had a chili bin in the middle of the boat um, So the chili bin was in the middle so I couldn't put my legs straight down So I had to have my legs outwards and I was kind of just holding on to the side um, But everyone was at the back of the boat um, And we you know no one thought anything of it um, and we started to head towards the bar and then looking out on the bar completely fine there was like lots of like little waves you know I ha I didn't even know what a bar was um, so I was just kind of like when I saw it I was like oh that looks a bit like you know kind of like choppy like really little like little waves like I'm talking like this big just like little choppy waves um, and I was like oh okay that makes sense so yeah we obviously go over that to get out to sea um, and I just obviously stayed seated because I just you know I thought sitting down was the best thing um, and it didn't really cross my mind about the fact that everyone else was at the back of the boat and I was the only one at the front of the boat it just didn't really cross my mind and I guess it didn't cross anyone else's um, mind my friend Jordan did say to me that oh it might get a little bit bumpy at the front um, but I kind of just thought he meant like you know like when you're going fast and it gets like a little bit bumpy and I was like oh that's fine like I'm fine um, and <laughs> little did I know what was about to come up but no one thought it would be anything we literally saw the bar completely fine um and we went out and as we were going out um it was okay it was definitely bumpy um and then it started getting a little bit more bumpy and i was kind of like oh my gosh okay okay i might need to move and i didn't really think to myself oh standing up will be better or holding on like that would be better i was just kind of holding on like that and i was like oh my gosh okay it's getting a little bit bumpy and i was getting thrown up off my seat and my neck was getting jolted and i was like okay this is starting to kind of hurt i should probably like do something about this um and as i'm thinking this we're going you know like reasonably fast over the bar and everything's happening so fast and i'm kind of thinking to myself oh yeah okay like i probably should like try to move but because we were going so fast and i kept getting like jumped up i was like no it's too dangerous to like try and move because if because the chili bin was there if i tried to move i'd probably get flung overboard so i was like oh my gosh and um i was just kind of holding on 
Anyways, then I'm kind of like freaking out a little bit because my head's getting jolted and my neck's getting a bit sore because it just kept slamming down. I kept slamming on my butt and my neck was just, you know, getting jolted. And I was like, okay, this is getting quite painful. Gonna have to do something. Um, and then I get so like, I get nervous thinking about it because it's so fresh in my mind and like I can see it happening so clearly. Um... But yeah, all of a sudden I kind of looked up and there was these two waves coming towards us. And like, it just, they came out of nowhere. Like literally nowhere. Every single person on that boat were just like, where did these waves come from? Like it just came out of nowhere. They were these two humongous waves. Like I'm talking over two meters, really high up waves. And they're coming towards us. And by this point it was getting quite bumpy. And I like see these two waves and I'm like freaking out because I'm like, oh my gosh, what the hell is about to happen? Like, are we about to like flip over? Are we about to go straight through the wave? Are we going to get tipped over? Like what? And it's all happening so fast. So it's not like I'm sitting here like, should I move? Should I move to the back? Should I stand up? You know, it's happening so fast. I had like one second to think and like take it all in. Um, and then I hear my friend Will scream, hold on. And when he said that, I kind of was like, my heart sunk. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is like, this is really serious. Like this isn't normal. Like you're not supposed to go over waves this big. Anyways, when I hear him scream, hold on, I'm like, oh my gosh. And obviously the way I was sitting, I only had the two bars on the side to hold on to. I gripped those bars tighter than anything I've ever held in my whole life and ugh, I don't want to cry or anything but like it's just woof, so fresh in my mind um we just like literally went up the wave and we went up the first wave and I'm not kidding the boat was like at 90 degrees um and the driver if he didn't accelerate we would have 1000 cent tipped over like it was scary I was like oh my gosh we are so high up I just it all happened so fast it just we went up and then I just felt it the boat drop and as the boat you know because obviously imagine this is the wave coming at us like this we go up and then the boat just drops and I'm 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 here I'm in the front and I take all the impact and I literally cannot remember if it was the first wave or if it was the second wave because there was two it went one and then it went two um, and I honestly can't remember if it was the first wave or the second wave where the impact where the damage happened um, I assume it was the first wave but I literally cannot remember um, I remember f I remember feeling the impact of hitting the bottom and I remember like as soon as I hit that bottom I just felt something break like something just like in my back and just like crushed like I just felt my back crush and like I just I can't remember it like I just I don't know why my mind must just block out that because it was so painful but I actually cannot remember hitting like I, I remember the feeling of hitting the ground and I remember the feeling of my back crushing but I can't remember what happened like where I landed I can't remember if it was the first wave or the second wave like the trauma was just too much obviously for my brain um, but yeah I just remember slamming down and like if you really think about it it's the height of the wave and then the height of the boat like the boats up here and then it's just a straight fall like oh my gosh I just I wow it was just uh, pain I just cannot even begin to describe what it felt like like it just just like imagine the worst pain in the entire world and that's what it was like you can't even I, can't, I literally cannot even describe how painful it was like I can't even begin to describe how painful it was so yeah basically I hit the ground and yeah obviously felt something crushed and I immediately knew something was wrong I just remember screaming like just screaming and I was screaming stop stop but we couldn't stop until we got over the bar um and I <laughs> Oof, those waves those last couple waves because we were pretty much at the end of the bar until those two random waves came um, but as we got over those it was just a couple more to get through until we got to just you know like flat sea um, and I just remember those last couple waves were just excruciatingly painful 
Um, but yeah, so then we make it out of the bar and I'm lying there like I something is so wrong. Like they were all kind of in shock. Um I saw everyone last week and it was really good to be able to kind of talk about the whole thing and get everyone else's perspective and you know experience um, because obviously when you're in so much pain you kind of block out what's happening around you so it was so good to be able to hear them talk about you know what happened from their point of view um, so yeah everyone basically said that you know once we got to that flat um, flat seat area everyone just kind of like we just didn't know what to do like we literally did not know what to do um we weren't sure if it was you know just like a pinched nerve or something that would you know be really painful for like a couple minutes and then kind of go away or we weren't sure if you know maybe it was a sprain or maybe i just really like hit it really hard but i just knew i just knew in my heart that something was like really really wrong and i was like no like guys like i need like something's wrong and i'm not saying it was calmly i'm like screaming like no like help um anyway somehow i got into a position and it was the most awkward position but it was the only position where i could like breathe because every other position i literally could not breathe because of how bad the pain was um i couldn't stand i couldn't move i couldn't do anything so i kind of dragged myself with my arms and one leg my left leg was over the chili bin and my body was kind of lying on the seat on my side um and then my right leg was down on the boat i literally can't describe the position um but just imagine the most awkward weird position that's what i was in and it was just the worst position to be in but i just could not go in any other position um and i remember grabbing my hand instantly in this kind of like shape and i pushed it so hard into my back because it was the only thing that was like somewhat relieving a little bit of pain like it wasn't but it was kind of like holding the pain like, and my arm was like lying down and i was lying on my arm um and yeah i was just in so much pain and also actually i forgot to mention when i first hit the ground after we had gone over the rest of the bumps my legs both of my legs went so tingly like i felt tingles like pins and needles but a different kind of tingling like similar to pins and needles but like 10 times more intense go straight through my legs and it was like starting from my hips and it went down to my toes and it was like tingling down and then all of a sudden i couldn't feel my legs like i literally could not feel my legs and it was like you know if you have a dead arm when you like sleep on your arm or something and it goes completely like not a little bit of feeling like completely dead and you have to like pick up your arm and like shake it to make it like you know come back um that's what happened to my legs and they were completely dead and i freaked out and i was like oh my gosh i can't feel my legs like i cannot feel my legs um i can't move my legs i can't feel my legs um and i was freaking out i was like oh my gosh i'm paralyzed like i'm I, i'm paralyzed like what the hell but i'm also not thinking like that i'm thinking you know it was like so painful but i'm also thinking like i'm screaming in pain and i'm freaking out and i'm also freaking out that i'm paralyzed and i'm in a boat and i'm in i'm at sea how the hell am i going to get to an ambulance or what's going to happen and i'm freaking out and stuff and everyone's like okay it's going to be okay it's going to be okay and i'm like it's not going to be okay like i'm literally paralyzed um and i was freaking out quite a bit um but also just in so much pain so i'm trying to kind of somehow relieve this pain of myself and i'm also you know i can't scream so much because i'm trying to save my energy for like the pain <laughs> i can't scream because i'm in so much pain so i'm trying to use that energy from screaming to hold in the pain or whatever anyways um so yeah my legs were completely numb for about 15 minutes i think um and i just could not move them it was it was freaking scary like that feeling was just absolutely terrifying so then we're stuck with the situation of we're out at sea we like are literally out at sea we there's no way we can go back the way we just came um like what are we gonna do and i'm telling sam because sam ran up to the front of the boat uh to sit with me um and i'm like call the ambulance like i'm not kidding like call it like i'm this is serious like this is like so serious like get an ambulance and i was telling him to get a helicopter to come out to see um i don't know how to do that but i was like just get someone here now like i need someone here now um anyways and then 
um if you think that's bad that's just where the story begins um I think the driver called his mum because we, we were staying at his house and his parents were back at the batch and um, he called, I'm pretty sure he calls his mum and his mum was the one that called the ambulance. I'm pretty sure, I can't, I'm not too sure on that but pretty sure that that's what happened and his mum called the ambulance. They decided that they would take me around to the beach and um, his dad would swim out to us um, with his brothers on paddle boards. So we went through the most painful long drive um back um out to the main beach and oh my gosh the time it took i because i'm obviously lying down can't see anything other than the sky the thing for me is i didn't know what was happening everyone was just saying to me it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay but no one was no one was really telling me what was happening and i'm looking at sam and he just looked so concerned and I was that was freaking me out more because I was like what is happening like what the hell is happening like well, where is the ambulance like is there an ambulance and also keep in mind I'm in Matarangi so if so I'm in the Coromandel you know it's not like Auckland where an ambulance could be there in 15 minutes the closest ambulance is 10 so you know it's not going to be there in 15 minutes and just you know be able to help me instantly so um, and there's no lifeguards at the beach, nothing like that. Um, so yeah, he was freaking me out because he just wasn't telling me what was going on. And then I was trying to ask Will and Will was like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And everyone just kept saying to me, it's going to be okay. And I'm like, it's not okay. Um, what is happening? And I'm freaking out and I'm in so much pain. And I'm also just trying to literally survive. Like everything that was going through my head was, this is like this is it like you have to literally fight to survive like this is like you're about to die like literally survive like keep fighting and because my brain kept telling me go to sleep go to sleep like just just go to sleep and like don't just just go to sleep and I knew that if I went to sleep you know who knows what would have happened so I was like no 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 I've got to keep fighting I've got to keep fighting um and the pain I just I literally cannot just I can't describe it I just I actually I actually just can't describe the pain like it was just excruciating like I, I I'm I, I'm speechless at how much pain I was in um I just all I could think was fight like survive I was just trying so hard to literally survive um, and I was praying the whole way as well. I wasn't really praying properly because I could not think. I was just like, God, don't let me die. Like, do not let me die. I can't die. I've got so much to do. <laughs> I was like, I can't die. Like, I've got all these goals that need to be achieved. I've got a life that has to be lived. Like, do not let me die. I was like, I'm not going this way. Like, this is not how I go. I'm not going to die. And I was like, please, just don't let me die. Not yet. Like, just don't let me die. And that's all I was thinking the whole way back, along with just survive and just literally trying so hard to just just hold on literally hold on and then that's what sam was saying to me like just hold on it's not much longer we're almost there you're gonna be okay we're almost there and he kept saying that to me for at least i think it was at least over half an hour getting back to the beach because we had to go so slow because if we sped up just the tiniest bit i would just scream in pain so we had to go at a very slow steady pace um so that i could hold my back and basically stay as still as i possibly could because if i moved one muscle oh my gosh it just would trigger the pain even more um so I was literally just saying to myself hold on hold on hold on so then I think on the way to shore I think that was when I was going downhill pretty fast like at first I was kind of like in shock and I was the adrenaline was going through me and I was like I was on my side and I was pushing on my back and then at one point we tried to move me onto my back but then you know when we tried to even just move me the slightest bit it was just no way I just was screaming I was like no like put me back like I cannot do this um it was really terrifying like it was oh my I just can't explain how much pain it was. 
I was terrified. I literally thought I was gonna die. And the I just, I, I just can't describe how much pain I was in. Um, and yeah, when they tried to move me, I just screamed and I was just screaming like no. And then obviously they instantly stopped and put me back how I was. Um, and we figured it would be best not to try and move me again because, you know, when you're dealing with back, spine, neck issues and stuff, you know, everyone knows that it's best not to move uh -huh. the person. Anyways, until, you know, there's medical professionals and all that. And then at one point I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I literally can't deal with the pain anymore. The whole time I was feeling myself go downhill and I was feeling myself fade away. And so then I started changing my prayers from please don't let me die to give me peace and um, let there be no pain and let me just go easy. It was like something had switched in my mind instead of fight and survive. It kind of switched to I'm going to die now and this is it. I'm, I'm dying. This is my last time on earth. Um, and then the scary thing is, is I actually did feel peace for a couple seconds. It just, the pain went away for literally a couple seconds. The pain and everything like that just went away. And I felt my hand drop on my back. And like, because as I was saying, I was holding my back so tightly, like so tightly. I felt my hand drop and I just for a second, for a couple seconds, felt no pain and I felt peace. And I was like, this is it. And I looked up at the sky um, and everything just started to go kind of like white and fuzzy. Um, and then I passed out. <laughs> um, and I literally thought, I felt my eyes close because I saw it all going white and I felt my eyes close and I felt my arm drop and I just felt like this weight had just been lifted off me when I closed my eyes and um, I don't remember anything after. Um, and then I woke up to Sam slapping me in my face. <laughs> I just remember Sam slapping me in my face saying like, wake up, like wake up, like stay with me and stuff. Um, and then the pain just came rushing back. So yeah, that was um, that was a really intense part of it, because I, I truly thought I was gone, um, and I thought I had died. Um, and then yeah, Sam slapped me in the face, and I was back. <laughs> I don't know what would have happened if he had let me keep sleeping. I'm not sure if I would have died there or not. Um, but yeah, I'm freaking grateful that I am not dead I am so grateful to be alive today so yeah then the pain just came rushing back and um yeah it just went straight back to how it was before and I, this time I was really really fighting to not go back to sleep um or not not to pass out again um and I was really struggling not to and I was like still trying to push into my back and that's when I was saying to Will like I need you to like push into it because I just I don't have the strength anymore I'm starting to get weak I'm like I'm I can't do it um anyways then yeah after like half an hour we got to the beach area and um his dad came paddling out in the water um on paddle boards with um james's brother and his friend they came out on paddle boards but then i guess yeah once they saw my condition and everyone was talking they're like no we can't move her not in this condition because i got knocked by a wave if i got somehow knocked off the board which you know was so possible because we're about to go through the waves to get back and the waves are big today so you know i get knocked off the paddle board and that's it i will drown because i cannot swim i can't feel my legs can't kick can't move my back so if i go under that's it i'm drowning um so they decided to not end up doing that um and I'm really grateful that they didn't do that because, yeah, I think I would have definitely died if they had gone with that option. So then there was another issue of, so how are we going to get her back now? And basically, long story short, they decided that the only way back was going back through the bar. That drive from there back to the bar, um, back through the bar and back to the like dock area, it was the just again most painful painful time and it took over 40 minutes i think 
the whole time we were in the boat was yeah maybe like an hour and 15 minutes um and just when you're in that kind of pain that time goes so slowly you're just lying there like when am i going to get to shore when am i going to get help um when is this pain going to be relieved um but yeah so anyways thankfully we safely made it back through the bar they managed to kind of sit in between two waves the whole way back and james did amazing driving i'm so grateful to him then when we got eventually finally back to the dock um the ambulance was there the two ambulance people came on board and um she was starting by this time also my right leg um i was able to feel it more and i was able to move it and it was still tingly and still numb um but in a lot of areas i could feel it which was so good um and i could feel my left foot uh like i could move my left foot um, so I was starting to get a little bit of feeling back in my legs which was just so amazing um, and I, I, it was giving me so much more hope the lady from the ambulance comes in and she does all her checks and stuff on me and is asking me questions of what happened and all that and I'm just like they're dying in pain but I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can so the only thing that they could give me while I was in the boat before that while they were trying to figure out how they were going to move me because again like I said it's not as easy as just lifting me out of the boat and putting me in the ambulance I was in a bad position, um, you know, one wrong move and my back, you know, I'm paralyzed. Literally one wrong move and I'm paralyzed. So um, they had to be really careful. So to help take the edge off the pain, I think they weren't able to give me some of the strong pain meds because that's where we had to get the helicopter and stuff involved. So I don't think they had it on them or something. I have no idea what the situation was. But basically, um, to start off with, they gave me um, this green whistle thing, which I wrote it down. It's called methoxyfluorine. I think that's how you say it. So it's this like green whistle and you basically like breathe in and out into the whistle and it basically just makes you high so it kind of takes the edge off a little bit um so i had two of those whistles and oh my goodness i was so high like it was it was hard because it was it took none of the pain away so the pain was still like so bad but me myself i was so high and i was so slow and i was so like ha, ha, ha. so yeah i'm lying in the sun it's like hot they have a blanket over me so to the public it probably looked like i had died because it's like that white sheet they laid over me because the sun was so hot they were trying to block the sun until they could figure out how to get me into the ambulance um and i'm not entirely sure how they got me into the ambulance apparently i uh, they had these like break apart like stretcher thing or something they kind of were like putting it behind my back or something trying to get me in i can't remember so there were a lot of miracles that happened on that day and i truly believe that god was with me the whole time because there was just so many things that just lined up for me that were so um they were just miracles like i just truly believe he was with me that whole day when i was in the boat um this random guy comes up and you know he's just in shorts and a t-shirt sunglasses just on holiday comes up to one of the ambulance guys and they knew each other and he actually is part of the westpac helicopter team here in auckland but he was just on holiday um and so he was the one that actually called in the helicopter which i am just so grateful for him the fact that he was there just on holiday in the same spot just in the right place at the right time i just i can't believe it like i'm so lucky that he was there um so he called in a helicopter um and i think he was helping out with figuring out yeah what to like how to get me in the ambulance or something i honestly it's a bit of a blur i think i was in so much pain that that whole kind of like getting me from the boat to the ambulance just kind of blurred out in my mind and to be fair i was really high on those green whistles so i'm not exactly sure i was kind of yeah spaced out a little bit so i wasn't fully aware of what was kind of happening but yeah and then there was also another miracle a lady who was i think she was the head icu nurse um she was again on holiday rushed over to see what was happening and see if she could help um and she was amazing so amazing was with me the whole time in the ambulance and i literally just yeah she was absolutely amazing so i'm so lucky that she was there as well so i can't really remember exactly the sequence of events that happened in the ambulance it's all a bit of a blur um 
but I think while I was in the ambulance that's when they were starting to put in my IV so because I remember having IVs in here in my wrist here and in my hand here and my hand here we were waiting for the helicopter to land because they had the strong meds um so nothing was working i'm pretty sure they gave me fentanyl when i was in the ambulance and you know not working in the slightest nothing was working i do remember them making me swallow tablets don't know what they were but yeah nothing helps the pain was just so bad at certain times i was kind of like oh, okay it's like not as bad but then you know it would come back a second later um and the numbness in my leg was still there i still couldn't really feel much of my left leg my right leg was pretty much okay um there was still a little bit of numbness but my left leg was pretty bad so then we were waiting for the helicopter um, and then I got the bad news that the helicopter had actually been turned away because there was a drowning in Tyroa So it had to go over there. So they had to send another helicopter from Hel uh, from Hamilton to come and Just keep in mind that I'm here waiting in excruciating pain for this these painkillers and to be airlifted to Middlemore so that I can get treatment um, and I'm just sitting here just in agony like just an agony waiting and waiting the whole day just felt just I just can't even explain how much that time dragged on and you're just sitting there like when is it gonna come when is it gonna come and I kept saying like when is it gonna be there and James's mum was with me the whole time and I'm so grateful for her she was just absolutely amazing right by my side holding my hand through it all I was terrified you know like it was so much was going on around me and I've got all these people um, you know speaking all this stuff about me and I'm not sure what they're saying and I'm like like what's happening to me again i'm it's a bit fuzzy the whole ambulance thing who came in and gave me what i'm not really sure um but i do remember they tried to land the helicopter they couldn't land the helicopter because of something about the area maybe it was too small or things were getting blown away it was just too dangerous to land it right next to me so they decided they had to land it in a green in the green area like the park area up the road um but the problem with that is that i couldn't get to that area because they could not move the ambulance like they just couldn't one move and i'm in agony um so they had to get a fire truck to go to the park to pick up the to get the um to get the westpac helicopter team in the fire truck to transport them to um to me Anyways, they come and the uh, head medic, I think it was, from the Westpac team, all I remember him saying was that they're going to give me a lot of drugs that's going to make me really loopy and he was saying that I'm going to probably start hallucinating and I'm going to feel really like, yeah, just drugged up basically and I was kind of like, okay, give it to me, like if it's going to take the pain away, just give me everything you got. Um, so they're injecting stuff into me. I wrote it down. So yeah, I was on methoxyfluorine, fentanyl, uh, morphine, and I was also on ketamine. Um, so they're injecting morphine into me. They're injecting... Oh, when they injected morphine actually for the first time, my whole body was like tingling. It felt like when you have pre-workout for the first time. It felt like that. Um, so I have all this morphine going through my system and then that wasn't doing anything. So I had to have ketamine. Um, and I think the ketamine was the only thing that kind of temporarily kind of kept it at ease the pain It just shows you how much pain I was in though to be on you know fentanyl metamorphine um, Ketamine all the stuff and a lot of it, you know um, I just remember it was just getting pumped into me just like time after time and he was like when you feel the pain Let me know and I'll top it up and I'm like I felt like literally every five minutes I'm getting topped up with ketamine um so yeah i was in so much pain um but thankfully the ketamine did kind of make me real loopy i remember um my friends coming into the ambulance to say goodbye to me um before i went into the helicopter because no one was allowed to come into the helicopter with me then by the way at this point as soon as i got out of the boat and into the ambulance he went and jumped straight and went back to the batch got all our stuff up, um, got all our stuff and headed back to Auckland because he knew that obviously it'll take him like three hours to get back to Auckland and obviously the helicopter's only like a 20 minute 
ride back to Auckland so I'd be there a lot faster and he also had the really hard task of calling my parents and letting my parents know so that they could go to Middlemore to be there when I landed um, and yeah that that was awful for my parents to hear that and they just yeah were absolutely yeah terrified for me as well um, so yeah I remember my friends coming to say goodbye in the ambulance and I very vaguely I just remember seeing them and as soon as I saw them I started to cry because I actually didn't cry the whole time I was like usually when I get usually if I hurt myself or if I'm or if I'm in pain I like immediately start crying but I just had no energy to cry like I was using all my energy to fight I just had no energy to cry um but the first time I cried I remember looking at them in their faces and just being like I'm scared because I had um the lovely nurse with me in the ambulance lady and I had James's mum with me the whole time in the um, ambulance and obviously I had all my friends with me on the boat um, so this was the first time I was getting I was gonna be going by myself you know in the helicopter and stuff with no one I knew and so I kind of looked at them and I was like I'm scared like I'm scared to go by myself um, but yeah, but I said goodbye to them all and they're all amazing. Honestly, I wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for, um, the six of my friends. Like, I just, yeah, they were amazing. Everyone did everything they could, um, to help me, um, not die basically and just help me get, um, out safely. But yeah, so then I went into the helicopter and when I was in the helicopter, I was tripping out so hard. I remember hallucinating in the helicopter and I was on this oxygen mask I had you know all these things hooked on me I had all these lines in me and everything oxygen mask all that and I remember my throat was so dry because I, I obviously was in the boat for over an hour in the beating hot sun and um, was in the ambulance for again over an hour I wasn't allowed any water in case they had to do emergency surgery when I got to hospital um, and also because it was too dangerous because I was lying down if I choked then you know um, they did give me a little bit of water in the ambulance they gave it to me through a syringe and it was literally basically just to wet my mouth and that was it um, and yeah so when I was in the helicopter I was dying of thirst and I remember like trying to grab the guy being like give me water but I couldn't say anything and I couldn't speak and my eyes I just remember them like feeling like they were rolling back consistently and um, I just remember I could see outside of the helicopter like I had these headphone things on and these earplugs in my ears and it was like um, it was so like I was kind of freaking out but then I wasn't freaking out because I was on all these drugs I was more just kind of like tripping out I was seeing all these shapes and everything like that in the helicopter um, and then I just remember yeah falling back asleep um, I was asleep what I think I think I was asleep for a lot of it um, I just remember waking up every so often and being like tripping out for a couple seconds and then falling back asleep um, but yeah, then we landed at Middlemore and I went I, and they and they um, transported me into an ambulance to go from the landing spot into the actual hospital. Um, and then this is where it gets even more just horrific and intense. I get um, thrown straight into the ED room and it was the most overwhelming thing ever. I was starting to wake up from the ketamine and all that and I was starting to you know be more aware of what was going on but I was still super loopy. Um, I remember as soon as I got into the emergency room it felt like exactly like the movies how when someone gets rushed in it's like it's so fast and hectic and they're doing all these things on you I felt like that's what it was and it was so overwhelming I get wheeled in and then immediately I've got a COVID test going straight up into my brain in one nose and I'm having a rapid antigen test in the other nose as well and then I'm getting um um, I'm getting injected into my hands oh sorry I'm getting IVs taken out of my hands and more IVs put into my hands getting um, needles into my arms here I'm getting blood tests I'm getting and this is all happening at once like literally at once I'm getting someone cutting off my shorts they're cutting it off and they're um, you know strapping me down and they're putting all these cords in me and they're injecting stuff into me and it's just so overwhelming like I just cannot explain how overwhelming it was um, and then at the same time I'm starting to throw up from all the medication because I'm having you know I'm talking so much medication in me like I've literally been injected with 
the most crazy amount of drugs and so I'm starting to vomit and I'm I can't vomit because of my back I can't move my back and when I'd move my back it would just be excruciatingly painful but I'm trying to vomit but obviously I'm lying down so I'm gonna choke on my vomit so I'm trying to lean and vomit and I'm getting vomit all over my face and in my hair um, and then they're shoving this thing down my throat which is like a vacuum to try vacuum up all the vomit and stuff and so I'm getting something shoved down my throat and at the same time obviously I needed water and my throat was so dry so it just made my throat even more dry um, and it was just horrific and it was so bad and um, it lasted so long what I felt like and then all of a sudden it kind of just stopped um, and then everyone kind of just disappeared and I didn't know where I was and it was just this scary room and I felt like I was outside um again I can't I'll insert a photo of what the room looked like obviously I wasn't outside it just for some reason felt like I was I think because um the doors open up to outside because that's where I came in from the ambulance I think can't remember too much um and then my parents came in and it was so good to see my parents when I saw my parents I just felt so much more like it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay um and then yeah when my parents were there I was still vomiting and they were trying to help me um and everything like that um and then we were in there for quite a while um but then i started getting rushed off to do tests so i was getting i went through you know this like x-ray bed lying thing um machine don't know what it was um yeah and i'm assuming yeah that's the x-ray i was vomiting like crazy um just so many meds just yeah constantly vomiting and it was i had nothing in my stomach so it was like no it wasn't like chunky vomit as gross as it sounds it was literally just straight like water basically um and yeah it was just like liquid coming out of my mouth um and then i get moved into this other area which was kind of just like a room that we were kind of waiting in for the doctor to come in i think it was the doctor or surgeon I, I don't know who he was to come in and basically say what was you know what had happened and what the x-ray show and everything happened pretty quickly it was all kind of it was just it was very overwhelming it was the most overwhelming day i just cannot even describe so yeah then we were waiting in the room and i'm you know vomiting and um i'm getting that vomit thing shoved down my throat then i'm having these nurses come in and they are trying to get me to pee and i couldn't pee and they were getting me this bedpan and basically i was lying flat on my back um and no pillow or anything because we didn't want to you know risk any of my uh, spine anything going wrong so straight on my back and i'm lying at an angle and they're putting this bedpan on me so i'm literally lying upwards and they're trying to get me to pee in front of four people and i'm like i can't do it like it's just not gonna work um and yeah then they're you know just still pumping me with all these painkillers and stuff um and sam arrived at that time and we were all um in that room together um and we were basically just waiting for the person to come in and just say what had happened um and again you know we weren't waiting for long it was um it was really quick um and then this team came in and basically said to us yeah i broke my spine so i completely bursted it it basically exploded um, my L2 and my lumbar vertebrae bursted um, completely crushed and broke um, so yeah he said that basically um, you're gonna need surgery he said that uh, yeah basically the surgery is gonna involve putting rods and screws in your back um, to basically hold your spine up um, and he said that um, it has to be an emergency surgery because uh, the way the bone had bursted, um, the side part was really close to hitting my spinal cord. Like it was so close. And if we had waited any longer, um, it would push on my spinal cord one move um, in that direction or it pushes in that direction anyway um, basically I'll be immediately paralyzed from my waist down so um, yeah he said that we're gonna have to do emergency surgery and it was it was quite scary because he was saying all the risks with surgery he was like you know um, there is a risk of death and there's a risk of you getting an allergic uh, a reaction to the rods and the screws and there's a risk of you getting paralyzed just from the surgery um, there's a risk of the nerves getting damaged there's a risk of all this stuff and I'm just hearing all this stuff 
like it's just one thing after another you know that night my anxiety levels were just absolutely through the roof I mean, it was literally every minute something insane was happening and it was like i just can't I, ca I can't process this all and yeah he's saying that basically it will bring around the papers and you can sign them and we'll do the emergency surgery when you hear something like that it's just uh, it's just crazy how you know like one thing can like your life can literally just change in seconds um and it was just uh, it was just a lot to hear that um and you know the surgery was freaking me out you know i've never broken a bone in my whole life i've never had surgery in my whole life and then to have this which is the most just insane hectic scary and just so serious um happen to me is just so crazy and you know like there's risks that i couldn't ever walk again and all that um we weren't able to get the surgery done that night because I think by the time they had done the x-rays and figured out that I had um, broken my spine and stuff, um, it was it was really late, I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, there was no way we'd be able to do it overnight, so I was going to be first in the morning. Um, so yeah, then after all that happened, um, I had to go through a whole bunch of other procedures. It was just horrible. Um, and then from there, they told my dad and Sam that they had to go home because of COVID. There was no, you're not supposed to have anyone with you or any visitors or anything. Um, they actually said that I wasn't allowed to have anyone with me overnight. And I refused and I said, no, my mom has to be with me. Like I, me and my mom were just like, no way. Like there's no way she's gonna be here alone. Um, so thankfully, thank God, I'm so grateful, they let my mum stay with me. Um, so we went up to our ward and thankfully we got a room to ourselves, which was so amazing. Honestly, it made the biggest difference. And then I had to go for my MRI scans um, and when I was doing my MRI scans, I had to, they had to pause it halfway because I kept vomiting. I threw up three times in the MRI scan and it was all blue water. I remember like looking at the vomit and it was literally nothing in it but just clear blue water. Um, basically that was the first, that was the day it happened and that was the hospital experience um, of the first kind of night. Um, yeah, it was, oh, it was just so intense, it was horrible, it was horrific. I just can't even describe how bad it was. I just, I've never had that much anxiety before and just, I've never felt that overwhelmed. Like it just felt like my whole world was just crumbling. So yeah, I hardly slept that night. I was just in pain basically the whole night. It was horrible. But basically straight away in the morning, I was the very first surgery of the day. Um, so yeah, then I went into surgery basically. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I just had a bit of a cry. I think everything just got a bit much. Um, and today everything has, I think I've pushed myself a bit too hard today and then filming this video, just everything, all my emotions just... Ooh, quite high so I just had a bit of a cry so just ignore that I'm just gonna keep going um I feel like I need to get through this last part uh, I feel like I need to get through the rest of this quite fast because I feel like this video has been so long so I apologize about the length of it but I just feel like there's so much I have to say I just can't cut it down um so when I went into surgery um before I went in I had like a consult with the whole surgery team basically and they explained to me kind of what they were going to do. I didn't really understand. I was kind of just like, okay, okay. Um, and I had to sign some papers and they kind of just talked me through a little bit and they talked me through how I'm going to, you know, go to sleep and then I'm going to end up going to surgery and just explaining how the surgery would work and all that. And so then they injected me with something and I fell asleep and obviously I don't remember any of the surgery. Um, but I do remember waking up and the wake up was horrible. I remember just waking up in this room. It was obviously the recovery room. And like this guy across from me was like having this coughing fit. Like he sounded like he was dying. I was so scared that he had COVID. And he's just like coughing and spluttering everywhere. Like sounding like he's going to die. And then there's this baby like screaming and crying. Um, and there's all these loud voices like talking and stuff. And I'm like freaking out because I'm like, where the hell am I? Like what just happened? What the hell? And I'm like... Like, why does my back feel like it's just been, yeah, like, 
I just wow it felt it felt so weird because it wasn't the same pain because before it was like pain but this was like oh it was it was kind of like not as painful because it was um because I was so highly medicated um but it felt like my whole back had just been yeah literally ripped out and replaced like it just felt so weird um so yeah i was like super overwhelmed and i was like where the hell am i and this nurse was next to me and she was actually quite rude like she didn't tell me anything i was just like what's like what's happened like where the hell am i like i was freaking out she didn't say anything to me about where i was she just like shoved a, uh, an ice block into my mouth and like literally i had an ice block and i was kind of like oh okay um and then she wheeled me back to my room and didn't say a word so i was like okay um, but yeah, it was quite overwhelming, but it was so good to see my mum. When I saw my mum, I, I felt so relieved, and then I kind of remembered that I just had surgery, and I was like, oh, okay, the surgery must have gone well, at least I'm not dead. Um, but yeah, so surgery went really well. He said it went as well as it could possibly have gone. It went better than they expected. He said that my bone was really, really strong, which was really good, um, so that um, the screws, you know, adapted really well to it. So basically, I have six screws in me. I have four six centimeter ones and one uh, and two three centimeters i think that's the sizes and i have two rods of me um i'll put a photo up of the x-ray um but yeah they were really happy with it they didn't decompress the nerve uh the nerves because they felt that it was too risky and that's when i really yeah have the risk of getting um paralyzed from the surgery so they decided not to do that um, it was weird how he was describing it, how he had to like lift my muscles up to get to it. Like, that sounds so weird to me. Um, but yeah, so surgery went really well and basically after that it was just recovering in hospital. The pain's been a lot different to the pain of um, the accident. The pain of when I broke the bone was just absolutely unbearable. Um, and it was just... It was just so intense, but the pain um, after surgery is obviously nowhere near that extent. It's just, um, it's just still really painful, but yeah, not as intense as it was prior to surgery. Those first couple days, I literally thought I was dying because of how bad it was. Like, all I could think about was just survive, survive, survive. I was just in the worst headspace. I just... It wasn't that I was negative or anything, and I wasn't even, you know, even thinking about the accident. I was just so focused on just getting through the pain that I was in at that very moment. So yeah, the first couple of days were awful. I had a lot of nerve pain um, down both my legs. Um, a lot of my nerves were damaged, so yeah, a lot of nerve pain. Like, I'm talking so much nerve pain. Um, nothing would help. No medicine would help. Um, my mum had to just constantly massage my legs just because, yeah, the nerve pain was just so bad. Uh, yeah, I was still on really, really heavy meds. Uh, and, yeah, so basically, yeah, the first couple nights and days were really bad. It was crazy. The first, the day after the surgery, so it wasn't even 24 hours later, they tried to get me to sit up. Um and stand up and oh my gosh it was so painful so it was just it was the most intense thing ever and it just felt horrible i stood up for a couple seconds but then my blood pressure dropped like insanely and i got really lightheaded so i had to sit down immediately because i was about to faint um but yeah that was really intense um having to stand up um but then I think it was that night or maybe it was the next night I ended up being able to do it again and stand up and I could take a couple steps which was so awesome. It felt so amazing to actually be able to walk again because, you know, we weren't sure if I'd be able to yet walk um, again after the accident. So I'm just so grateful that I can walk. I just, I cannot believe how yeah, lucky I was to not have been paralyzed so yeah basically i'm um, super grateful yeah to be able to walk so then from there basically every day i was just trying to progress more and more i was able to walk uh, more with my walker um and then we tried to do crutches crutches was really painful to start with um but then again obviously with 
the days going by it seemed to get easier and easier well not easier but better um, so there was yeah a lot of progress being made in hospital and obviously every day that went by I seemed to get better and better so um, the first couple days you know I was just consistently sleeping I was either in pain sleeping or literally just trying to get through the pain and just trying to not think about it and trying to just focus on just you know getting through it so that was the first couple of days and then I started to um get a bit better started to be able to have the brain fog was really bad to start with the brain fog started easing and I was starting to be able to kind of um be a bit more talkative um I was able to uh yeah oh sorry so when everything started going uphill was when I woke up one morning at four o'clock and I just oh, also another thing is I couldn't sleep in hospital I literally woke up every two hours I just could not sleep um my sleeping yeah was so bad in hospital um but yeah i um woke up at four o'clock one morning and i just said to myself i'm gonna do this i'm gonna get through this pain i'm gonna recover and i'm gonna get back to what i was and i'm gonna be better i'm gonna come back from this so strong i'm gonna show everyone that you can be positive no matter what i'm gonna just be so positive um so i really made this like switch in my mind that i was just going to be so positive and i was going to go into this with yet yeah, the most positive attitude which to be fair the whole time i had a really positive attitude towards it like i never complained once that this had happened to me um or anything like that i was just so grateful to literally be alive because i knew i knew how close i was to dying and i knew how close i was to getting paralyzed so i was just I didn't say a word I was just grateful I was literally grateful um, and yeah so then from then yeah when I really flipped the switch and I was kind of like nah I'm gonna you know every day instead of thinking to myself oh my gosh I just want to get through this pain like I just need to get through it instead of thinking that I'm just gonna be like I am going to get through it and I just I just really had a positive mindset and ever since I flipped that switch basically it just got better and better every single day I just started to get slowly but surely a little bit better and I was yeah walking around more I was walking out in the corridor um with my crutches and stuff and I was able to do things like brush my teeth and all that so I was making a lot of progress like really fast you know the days were crazy it was just you know I ended up being able to have a shower with the nurse and my mom and um all this stuff it was just like every day seemed to be like something huge would happen like I'd be able to walk again or have a shower again or use the toilet or something like that um which was so awesome but yeah basically the whole time there was still a lot of pain a lot of tests a lot of scans um a lot of people asked me if I was bored in hospital or what I did to like pass the time and I was like and I just I literally I was not bored once like I was either in pain sleeping or they were getting me up doing things um like you know walking going upstairs or something like that so there was not a single time where I was bored the only time where I was bored was on the last day when I was trying to get discharged but the paperwork was taking ages it was the only time where I was actually bored every other day I was not bored once so yeah hardly watch Netflix as well hardly went on my phone I just kind of posted updates and messaged people back I could not believe the amount of love and support I got honestly it was it was hundreds of messages I was getting hundreds of new followers and yeah just comments messages everything like that it was just it was crazy um so yeah I was just kind of trying to keep up with that and reply to everyone um so yeah I'm so grateful for everyone's support and prayers and love it honestly helped so much just feeling like I had the support of everyone um and I did make a post on my Instagram asking if people wanted to see my journey on my progress and stuff and yeah everyone said yes I got so many yeses to that everyone was being so lovely so kind I just yeah I'm so overwhelmed by all the support I've had from everyone I just can't even begin yet yeah, to describe how grateful I am um, for everyone's support so yeah that was basically a really shortened version of my hospital experience um, maybe one day I'll go into detail about it but basically yeah it was very very rough but a lot of progress was made and then yeah finally I was well enough to be able to be discharged and sent home um, so that was yeah when my home journey started it was really rough at the beginning kind of 
um, finding a routine, you know, there were so many things that I figured that I couldn't do. Um, just, yeah, so many little things that kind of frustrated me because I was like, usually I'd be able to do this easily, like make a smoothie. C can't do that now. So, um, there was a lot of adjustments, you know, brushing my teeth, washing my face. I have to sit on a special chair and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of learning um, that was involved coming home, but I feel like I'm in a good routine now. I basically need 24 seven support. So I've needed it since I got home from hospital. When I got home from hospital for the first couple days, um, actually for the first week, basically I had someone by my side every minute of every day um, because I could hardly like walk. Um, I really needed my crutches to get from one room to the other. I just had constant support um, right by me. But now that I am getting a bit better, I'm actually quite mobile now, so it's really good. I'm able to kind of walk around the house without crutches, just short distances. And I tend to like just lean on the couch or lean on the counter as kind of support as I walk past. But it's so awesome to be able to do that and to be able to kind of like walk around without the crutches. Um, and I've been making huge progress with my walks outside. Today I did my, full, uh, my first little like 10 meter walk without crutches which was so cool which I filmed and yeah then I'm just going to be slowly getting better and better working towards um getting rid of the crutches um which will take a lot a, a long time but I am still trying to do that but yeah so basically I need 24 7 support currently I am sleeping downstairs because my bed um my bed is a queen bed and it has no um sides on it and it has no uh, headboard or anything so it's just a straight bed and my mattress is so soft so it's really bad for my back um, so we decided to get our spare bed which was a bunk um, the wood part of it is really good for me because I ha it helps me roll out of bed because there's this whole kind of routine I have to do to get out of bed and into bed um, so I had to use the sides of those because in the hospital there were the rails on the sides of the beds um, but thankfully the posts of this bed helped me a lot um, so that's really good and that's been yeah, awesome so I've been sleeping downstairs my mum or my dad sleeps downstairs with me in the lounge um, we have like another mattress just on the floor and either my, my mum or my dad sleeps with me. I still struggle to sleep. I struggle with flashbacks um, of the day and just memories of the accident happening. So I really struggle to fall asleep at night. I am currently still very heavily medicated. I'm spreading my medication out a bit better but I'm still very heavily medicated and I think it will take me a while to kind of ease up on them. Um, I definitely need them a lot. I've got like a whole chart. I'm constantly taking meds, um, which is not ideal, but I just have to do it. Otherwise I'm in absolute agony. I can't feel my heels um, and I can't feel my knee and I can't feel my left um, quad area in certain areas. And then in my back, my lower back in half of my bum, I, it's really, really weird. It's like numb, but I have um, currently got issues with uh, my nerve pain in my skin. So my actual skin is really irritated at the moment and it's really sensitive and sore. And it's just, yeah, it's really bad nerve pain. I can't, it's just so hard to describe. Um, but yeah, so I have to wear soft clothing and everything like that. When I wear other types of clothing, it really hurts me and stuff. So I try to wear as soft clothing as possible and soft sheets and blankets and stuff so that my skin doesn't get as irritated. Um, so I can feel that, but the actual feeling isn't there, like it's numb, um, but I can move the muscles. It's really hard to describe. I might talk about it more in a vlog as time goes on, but the surgeon said as time goes on, the muscles, uh, sorry, the nerves should decompress. Um, but yeah, when I have my six week check in with him, if I still don't have the feeling, then um, I guess we're going to have to see what we can do about that. But yeah, for now it kind of sucks. It's like when I put on moisturizer and stuff over my like left leg, it feels really weird because I can't feel it, but I can feel the pressure. It's so weird. So many adjustments um, that I'm finding at the moment. Um, yeah, so um, that's kind of a little bit about what's happening at home. I thought I would just quickly talk about the next kind of steps. So I'm given kind of an idea of a three month recovery um, kind of 
time frame by three the end of three months you know I should be back up and kind of um, moving again um, I should you know be able to go swimming I should be able to you know um, do light exercise or something I guess I, I'm not too sure to be honest we ha we're currently trying to find a physio and um, we've we've narrowed it down to a couple but we're gonna um, get into physio ASAP and then that's when I'll get a more good idea of what I will be able to do exercise wise and kind of movement wise because obviously if you know me I'm a huge gym freak I love the gym I love weightlifting um and this absolutely sucks that's my one thing I'm honestly not angry that the um that the accident happened I honestly have a really positive mindset towards it because I believe that it happened for a reason I believe it happened to me for a reason I think that um that yeah I just believe that it happened to me for a reason and I'm so grateful that I didn't die and I'm grateful for the accident because I know that it's gonna bring something in my life I know it's important for something in my life so I am grateful for it um, and I know it's I know it's there for a re I know it happened for a reason um, so I hold absolutely no anger no negative um, feelings towards the accident apart from the fact that I can't weight lift at the moment that's my only thing I just it kills me it's like it's just so difficult not being able to weight lift I can't even explain it's my escape it's it's the thing I love doing it's like every day it's my favorite thing to do it makes me feel good it makes me feel healthy it makes me feel happy and just having that taken away from you just it hurts it hurts so bad so that's my only negative thing um but I know that with my strong mindset I'll be able to do it again one day um I'm just gonna have to yeah figure out what's the safest way um to be able to do that eventually oh yeah I just wanted to quickly mention I'll show some photos of kind of my scar and how it's kind of healing at the moment I am growing to love it at first I was like oh my gosh like it's so big it's gonna ruin my back it's so ugly but I am so proud of it you know it's my battle scar it's like it's it's a part of me now like what's happened and it just shows what I've been through and how strong I am so yeah I love it um it'll just take a bit to get used to you know I think it's when I get in a bikini and I see it and I'm like whoa I think yeah but once it kind of heals up and it starts to fade a bit I think I'll um be really yeah happy with it and stuff I think it's just right now while it's still you know red and very obvious um I'm a bit kind of like whoa but yeah I know I'll grow to love it but yeah so basically now my journey is far from over it's gonna take a long time to recover a spinal injury um is not just like once it's healed just jump back into life um, this has completely changed my life my lifestyle and everything I just it's crazy it's like I just cannot believe how much my life has changed just in the past couple weeks um, it's just absolutely crazy so yeah my journey is far from over I am yeah basically just gonna be trying every single day to get better and just do better than I did yesterday and just constantly progress in my walking and my other skills and my brain and everything like that getting rid of this brain fog and you know eventually I'll start to be able to progress getting off my meds and everything like that so yeah every day at the moment is just about trying to make progress and also trying to rest and recover and not push myself too hard because I'm I'm no one to do that <laughs> I feel like I didn't get to say everything I wanted to say in this video but I just know it's gone on for so long um, and I'm sure I'll mention a whole bunch of other stuff when I kind of do my normal vlogs um, so definitely make sure you subscribe so that you can keep up to date with my journey and don't forget to follow my Instagram because that's where I post pretty much all my other updates um, in real time. It's hard to condense that huge amount of time into a short video um, because every second of every day has been intense and something's been happening, you know, it's been so full on. Um, so yeah, I can't, I missed so much information in this video but I just literally can't. I'll be here for two weeks if I actually explained everything that happened. I'm going to be doing a lot of vlogs of getting back into work um, and kind of trying to do some more work and you know business related content and showing how I'm kind of having to adapt to it um, since I'm not able to do a lot um, but yeah all that kind of stuff is just going to be in my vlogs so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up 
don't forget to subscribe to my channel um, and leave a comment. It really helps out my channel. Um, so yeah, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video.